Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this campaign one reunion one shot. Uh, I would give the normal intros, but that's uh. not for tonight. <clears throat> I'm back in the DM's chair. Dr. To tell, turned your hat. To tell a tale one year after the end of, uh, the end of C1. I would give the normal intros, but that's not what we're here for tonight. <clears throat> we begin on a dark and stormy night. However, the outside accommodations are pale in comparison to what's inside. We realize as we look through this pumpkin patch and decrepit run-down train station with stormy skies and black clouds and we are not in a Tudon tonight. We are in the kingdom of Timoret. This kingdom, known for having warring factions between some of the darkest creatures that the mind can perceive, has been locked for many years, almost an entire century. But on the last night of autumn, the current regent, one Lawrence Lockridge, invited the people to come to Castle Lockridge and take part in an autumnal ball. Since this is the first time any sort of dealing has been made with Timoret in almost a hundred years, Prince Caelan would be remiss not to go. The Night Council has accompanied him tonight. And as the people of Timoret drow and Aetheril aplendi, uh, even some folks who look human or elvish but have gaunter body structure and red eyes, uh, the people of this ball all seem to hail from a very dark walk of life. Cloaks and Grayed colors seem to be common. However, there are many who go up against this with bright, flashy colors. Tieflings and fallen Asimar dot the thoroughfare. What are you guys dressed up in for tonight? Now, you said Halloween. Are we talking ball or are we talking It's costume? a ball. It is a formal affair. Ooh, formal. <laughs> Um, but with like a cool mm, Halloween slant, I like it. it. No ball, yes. And uh, the only other thing worth mentioning is that there is slow, very waltzy music playing in this candlelit room with large paned windows that give you a full view of the moon in its uh, waning crescent. Oh, paint those word pictures, be. <laughs> So what do you guys dress up mm. as? Ooh, I... Mm, I'm wishing you had told me like 10 minutes ago. This is gonna take a minute. Okay, I'll go first because Finley is a woman of simplicity. She's literally just wearing like her captain uniform but darker aesthetic. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> cool. Like kind of like scales, like Skull clips on the cape. <gasps> Ooh, are you wearing oh, yeah. a cloak and, and feather? Ooh. Fuck yeah, let's go. Let's go with that. But she's all about mobility. She's a little bit paranoid, so. Yeah. Um. Hmm. What is Rowan wearing? I. I can see Rowan definitely wearing something <laughs> kind of in like the autumn theme. You know, very kind of like nature centric, because druid, obviously, haha. <laughs> um, but like, you know, like in in autumn, the leaves change color, and I think that she thinks that's very b pretty. So she's probably got something kind of with that theme going, like the reds and oranges, um, maybe some like darker colors as well. Um, but yeah, I can I can see something kind of like fall leaf themed. Nice. I, I appreciate the aesthetics. Um, I will tell you now, our boy, our prince, uh, sweet, sweet Clem, has brought, uh, 
has brought the ace outfit of retirement. Ooh. Ooh. Because <laughs> even though it's like, even though it is the old insignia of an old <laughs> it, it, it is also like, it is like a very snazzy kind of pimpernel kind of outfit, so like, eh, it works. <laughs> Anna is in a very phantom bride kind of ethereal green glowy kind of dress and for tonight has used magic to make her look like her lich self again. Oh, spooky. I love that. I love that a lot. So, uh, sorry, do you have anything? Hmm, I think Sorry has maybe rummaged through Calum's closet and stolen one of his capes. Mm -hmm. As well as, uh, she's got kind of one of those dresses that, like, shows the corset on the outside, the, like, bodice thing. Mm -hmm. And so she's, she's got lots of reds and fall colors and a snazzy vest, but... She made sure the dress was short so that she could wear pants and boots because you can't cartwheel in a dress. Learn that the hard way. This is true. Uh, like I said, the thoroughfare here is... Act I gave a lot of spooky races, but there still is the the evergreens are present. Your humans, elves, half elves, like, you know. The norms. <clears throat> the normies are there. Uh, but, uh, I'm kind of like the end of the fall with a it looks like a wine glass but it is very clearly is very clearly like sparkling cider for him uh there's like a beat where a glass clinks and all eyes turn towards the end of the hall and there is a humanoid looking man or boy man in that crux uh, red eyes, blonde hair, gray pants, bending in brown shoes, with a red kind of coat. Uh, they look over the this whole area, and you see them freeze up for a moment. <laughs> like I don't think he processed how many people were present. I don't. I do not think the amount of people present processed to this poor child. Uh. So after a, a moment's pause, he just goes, Well, <clears throat> I would like to thank all of you for attending tonight. Uh, this is the first autumnal ball that Timoret has had in, well, 99 years. And I'm honored to be the, the lord who, who opened the gates back up to all of you. Uh, you all look amazing. Um, enjoy the night. Uh... We have guards stationed outside to ensure that none of the darker sides of Timoret make it into Castle Lockridge. Um, you see his face kind of start to get red. <laughs> so, uh, have fun with that. And he slinks away, kind of not sure how to end his little... <laughs> He's cute. I like him. What a lad. Uh, by the way, uh, I, f I feel so bad that I completely skipped over this. Uh, Andre... What kind of autumnal ball affair are you rocking tonight as you're kind of going with Finley? <clears throat> uh... I, I totally, completely just forgot to mention it. Right, yeah, totally. Um... <laughs> Good question. I have no idea. Uh... <laughs> I feel like, I feel like Andre's probably in like, well, okay, this is a ball, so fancy, fancy, mm -hmm. but like, I feel like this is one of those instances where Andre would wear a suit instead of a dress. Ooh, good. <laughs> so, <laughs> The um, couple suits up, hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, wait, are they both like in suits? Yes. Oh, it's that's powerful. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I love it. What a, what a look. I love it so what much. What a powerful look. Mm, let's see. It probably is more like 
on the red side than the purple, because red is a more autumn-y color. Um, reds and browns and neutral earthy tones. Uh, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, the the regent, the lord, uh, who you'd all know is named Lawrence, uh, he personally wrote out invitations to everyone in attendance. Um, like, handwritten, too. Like, Lawrence is going all out for this. It seems like this is very special to him. Uh, it is then that uh, as Lawrence kind of ends his little speech and walks back, um, you see him talking to someone and then turn his attention elsewhere. And that someone kind of walks up towards all of you. Ava, would you like to introduce your character? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, hello. Um, I am playing a, uh, a ranger rogue, um, elf, what elf named Nia. Um, she has sort of tan skin and like shoulder length white hair that's sort of tied back into a beautiful bun. Um, and yeah, she's wearing like a very sort of elegant, almost like Sansa Stark type black dress with like a big like fur and feather mantle with like a long cape was behind her um and she seems very uh sort of walking over to them um i don't know yeah <laughs> you kind of she kind of intercepts your casual banter amongst yourselves um and lawrence follows up quickly and uh he speaks first, just going, We wanted to thank you for attending. I know what you don't to hear is a very long trip. Uh, yes. She, like, bows in a weird way, like she's not sure what to do. Yes, we, uh, thank thee and beseech you can talk upon normal. the... You can Sorry, restore. you can talk normally. <laughs> He he actually like leans like his like puts his hand up to his face and kind of leans closer to you and just goes, "You can talk normal. That's fine. No one else is watching." <clears throat> oh, cool. I'm like official, officially and unofficially princess, so I'm not supposed. I don't know how I'm supposed to talk ever. Uh, but hi, I'm sorry. These are my friends. Yeah, I give a polite wave. Pleasure. I was just bringing my friend over because I. Well, who hasn't heard what happened a year ago, am I right? Right, yeah, totally. Totally, totally, totally. But, I mean, just in case... I'm, that, uh... Of course, talking about... Someone... I'm, of course, was, talking about your life over the Shadow Dragon. Uh, yes. I just want to meet you. That I wish I had... If I had known the threats happening in a 2 I would have tried a bit harder to open up the gates sooner and aid you how I could, but it was beyond possibility. I it's go, okay. Well. It's okay, you can let it go. Well, I appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, but yes, I I think my friend here had a bit of doubts that heroes of your caliber would attend a party tonight, so I just wanted to take a moment to rub it in her face, I suppose. Oh, come on, you don't have to be so rude about it. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, I guess the... I guess introductions are important. Uh, this is... You know what, I think they'd rather introduce themselves. <laughs> and he says that as an out, because he sees someone else showing up, and has to kind of, like, noom his way over there. <sighs> Alright, guess he's leaving me here. Whatever. Um, my name is Niala. Pleasure to... Meet you all. Thank you for attending. Um, it's very nice to meet you, Nia. My name's Finley. Captain Finley. Captain? That's a... Quite a position, I suppose. I imagine, well, you all are sort of well-known. Your tales of your adventure have traveled far and wide. Finley kind of cocks her head. Yes. <laughs> I suppose they have. Do you have a problem with captains? 
Oh, no. I apologize. I'm not the best at conversation. Yeah, trust me. I know the feeling. We're all kind of <laughs> awkward. But it's okay. Because we're all awkward together. At least there's, you know, a number of us that can be awkward. I, I forgot how to count. <laughs> Andre just laughs at that and <laughs> steps forward beside Finley, holds her hand out for Nia to shake. Um, <laughs> hi. Yeah, my she'll, she'll shake it. Hi, it's nice to meet you. My name's Andre. Pleasure. At this, Lawrence kind of like, you see him kind of do a bit of a heel turn and come right back and just goes like, okay, sorry. Uh, sorry. Lord from the Barrens um, Mountains had to, you know. That, that is- what, yeah. what, what did you need? Did you need something? Oh, no. No, I just needed it. I just needed to say hello. You know, important dignitaries. And oh, I, I, you were like saying my name in like a panic tone. I assumed you, you like... Oh, right. Needed, <sighs> needed something. I apologize. <laughs> and you can see he says it with like a layer of understanding. <laughs> Like I'm, uh, he's apologizing. Well, also, like uh, I see what I ha- I see the flaw in this now. It's a <laughs> sincerity and like a a grim understanding of what this has to turn into now. <laughs> Don't you dare take my power from me. Uh, <laughs> he turns his attention towards uh, Nia again and just goes, "Well, I I I do apologize for leaving you unattended, but." In fact, it is the fault of the other two. Where did they even end up? I have no idea. I have not seen them all night. I mean, I, I saw them by the sort of I'm buffet afraid. earlier, but they're not there anymore. I'm afraid. Me too. I apologize. We just happen to have a, a, a mage amongst us who... Yeah, I don't trust them. I don't. Are they suspicious like bad, or you like don't trust them? Because no, I don't. They are the most chaotic, annoying person I have ever met in my entire life. They would probably burn this whole castle down if they aren't under supervision. Like as as an accident, or like as an on purpose? Debatable. I and like. Do we need to go stop them, or do we need to help them? Are they unattended probably right them. now? I mean, um, Titans with them. But I don't know where they both are. And you can see she's sort of like looking around the party now. Or like, not the D&D was... party, but the actual ball party. <laughs> trying to see if she can see them. Caleb adjusts his little mask for Ace and then just kind of leans towards Andre and just goes like, I didn't realize that, I didn't realize that Chaos Children just kind of came with the territory. <laughs> <laughs> she just chuckles to herself. I, yeah, I guess they do. Can't really escape them, it seems. No, well, I do appreciate that we finally get to pay off on that whole uh, promising that one night Ace and you would ride again, huh? Oh yeah. God, that was so long ago. We finally got to pay it back. <clears throat> I'm excited. <laughs> it's been a while. Speaking of excited, where's Anna? <laughs> oh my god. It just cuts to her, like, drinking some punch and, like, like, kind of scrunches her face and goes, Put lemon in the grape punch! And there's just a chaotic child laugh from somewhere. (laughs) She's probably committing arson. (laughs) Like, Anna's complaining about this punch, and in the corner there's just giggles. Would it happen to sound um, like me? He? No, it would not. Um, okay, good. <laughs> I think, but you do see Lawrence just like his eyes widen and just goes, "I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill them. I'm just gonna kill them." <laughs> yeah, you should probably go take care of that. I don't. Killing children is bad. They are not a child enough for this. They, to be... they probably deserve it. All honesty. Um. No. Um. Um. <laughs> They're not, I mean, they're not a child. They know exactly child. what they're doing. But I mean, if they it's, deserve it's, it. Finley! Wait, Finley! <laughs> what? I mean, Captain Finley. You're, they're, they're, sorry. Can we please, please, please avoid killing we, at this ball? Like, 
there's so many there's just i feel like every year we go someone dies guys, i'm like, not that not i'm joking guys it's okay i'm not going to kill a child <laughs> your, your voice is just so serious and also kind of sinister sometimes that when you say like yeah let's go murder a child we kind of panic you know, we've known Finley for like a year, for at least a year. Like, you it's have true. to realize. I don't believe that Finley would actually do that, but sometimes. I, but like... sometimes. <laughs> Lawrence and me are just sharing a look of utter confusion. Andre yeah. just looks at Finley like, you get used to it. <laughs> we, we all know everybody. We, 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 we love them. And, but sometimes. You get a little suspicious because you also know that person, you know, maybe is captain of the guard, knows how to kill people really yeah, well, like, like, or or something. they're really small and can shoot lots of moonbeams. You know, you get a little afraid when they say something threatening because maybe they will actually do something okay, this sorry. time. Okay, I get it. <laughs> Lawrence I apologize. Like, conversation, but when you guys stop, he's like, well, I should go check up on that. Um, before I go, I do want to say I am I'm excited to be to speak with you later in the evening. I I have some similarities towards your past situations and I I suppose some advice if you would be willing to grant it at some point this evening would be appreciated. After the party festivities die down. And, like, he's talking to all of you, but his eyes are, like, set, like, hunters prey on Caleb. <laughs> and he just kind of goes, like, uh, of course, that, anything. And he just kind of smiles and nods and just kind of goes, let me go handle that. <laughs> he just kind of leaves. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> An interesting person. I don't know. They all. Yeah. <laughs> Caleb just kind of eyes Nia. Like, do you have any idea what he's on about? I'm not sure exactly. He's been weirdly paranoid lately, and of course, there's all the various troubles of the kingdom. Of course, no one can seem to make up their mind or get along. It seems. Hmm. That sucks. So, I suppose that's one way to put it. <laughs> so someone needs our help again, I'm guessing. I mean, you are world-renowned adventurers. I take it you could at least offer some advice. Mm. Mm. Yep. That's true. I mean, you're right. Yeah, probably. At least a little bit. Andre? Yes? Mm. What's your passive perception? Oh uh, <laughs> well, question to Nia are our rogues. Yeah, my passive perception is a nineteen. <laughs> okay, Nia. Um, sorry, I was trying to find my character sheet. Twenty three, <laughs> apparently. Wow. Pe- oh. I had to double check and make sure I didn't see that wrong. But no, that's a twenty three. You guys are the same level. Is the thing how how did that? It's the brain. I don't. It's the ranger. Level. Yeah, it's the ranger, probably. Yeah. So, um, you guys both, as this conversation is happening, almost like, I almost like to imagine this a moment where you both kind of like notice it in each other and are just kind of like, eh, hey, so, you know, <laughs> but, like, you are both on just pivot alert. This room, you have it mapped in your mind already. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I like this idea that you two kind of catch each other doing it for a split second. <laughs> you just share a nod. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and instantly it pays off. Because you see Lawrence is like kind of human, but like walking towards like the back of the room again. And it looks like someone's behind him. But it's it's almost like as if his shadow was Peter Pan style right behind him. Oh, like following him? Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> it's 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 a level of subtlety in the movement 
that only those high passive perceptions could notice. Hmm. Okay. Is this normal? No. That's not normal. Andre just looks to Mia, just raises the brow like as if the ask. shadow is moving on his own. I, the, I don't trust it. The shadow turns, and you could almost swear it winked at you for a second. Um, De- definitely don't trust that. Um, and as you say that, the lights go out. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Sword out. Cool. Sword out time. <laughs> The lights I just had a dagger in each hand. Let's go. And crack of lightning just illuminates the room, just mm-hmm. for peak effect. The window mm-hmm. just shines with that white light, and you all see. It looks like Lawrence is the weird thing. The best way to describe it is: it looks like Lawrence is kidnapping Lawrence. <laughs> huh. Okay. Okay. Like the shadow is kidnapping him. It looks like a version. It looks like someone who looks a lot like Lawrence is grabbing Lawrence like from the being, mouth. And he's, being, he's being kidnapped by his evil twin brother. It, that is. <laughs> he does not have an evil twin we brother. We gotta run after full Lawrence. <laughs> oh, fake Larry, go get fake Larry. <laughs> Imaginary Larry, Imaginary. Imaginary. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you. So Andre and Andre and Nia, you both see this before anyone else. What do you do? Uh, I just start walking in that direction. Mm. I just, I just leave. Yep, they just, she just, just walks. <laughs> Wait, for the rest of you just see Andre huh? and you just beeline for the corner of the room. Uh, should, should we follow them? Uh, Finley's already going. Speed walking after Andre. Like, don't leave me. <laughs> Kalem, yeah, I guess so. Caleb trusts it. And as you guys are making your way, there's the sound of windows shattering. Nope. Uh huh. Of and course there is. Flying through is a group of You haven't heard this many Kenku screeches in your life. Okay. Kenku? Uh, just just okay. crows. Just bird. a flock of crows. So much just crows? Noise. Okay. It goes from zero to bird noise. It is a scene from the birds. Crows, Kenku are just breaking these windows and jumping in. Interesting. It's supposed to happen. And there's like just chaos. Dignitaries are hiding under tables. Anna like reforms up with all of you. And then as soon as the chaos starts, it stops. They all just kind of like halt towards like almost a militaristic attention. There's a sound of finger snapping that has like a metal scritch attached. Like if two pieces Ooh. of metal are against each other. And the door swings wide open, revealing the following. There's a woman. White hair, drow appearance. They look like a drow, except they have black corvid wings. Oh. Mm. She has a crown on her head, but it is instantly apparent that the three, like, points are made up of three different crowns. Oh, that's cool. Oh, like they can build it together. She oh, has, that's really cool. She has a flowing cape that has several patches. She has her attire looks like someone took the attire from like ten different nobles and mishmashed them together. Ma'am, interesting. A shoulder pad that oh, that doesn't appear on the other shoulder, like insignias that are half complete and end in a different insignia. Bits and bobs all over her, and she just walks in with this confident demeanor. And Nia, you see her. And you just kind of sigh. I did not think I was going to have to be dealing with this so soon. Let's leave. <laughs> Wait, what? 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 I, mm, I maybe sort of stole something from these bird people. We should leave. What? And go, and go away. Excuse I mean, me. we're already after Lawrence. Her Wait, hand probably figure out where he's... Her hand glows green. And she, like, oh. does a two-finger point towards the center of the room. And two were ravens walk in from her side. That's familiar. She but just, not too familiar. She kind of closes But not her too hand. not familiar. <laughs> <laughs> she closes her hand and then just kind of scans the room 
and then speaks. Well, this is almost too easy. So many nobles for me to tick off my list. Add your little bits and baubles to my collection. But of course, the big headhunt tonight is... Where is young Matt de Lockridge? Did he... Is he here, or did you hide him already? Oh, um, <laughs> Bad news, lady! He's okay. gone! What? He got kidnapped by Imagilary. You're a little late. Her right ear twitches. And okay. frankly, if he was here, we wouldn't hand him over to you anyway, so... That's true. Say that again. Slower. He got I kidnapped said. by Imagilary. Her, both her ears twitch, and you see her feathers and her wings start to, like... It looks like her wings are about to make a choking motion if they were hands. But uh-huh. then they kind of untense, and she just goes, This is fine. All right, then. I suppose. Of course. Then, then her eyes catch Nia. Oh, the little thief. Hello again. I hope you're enjoying my bow. Oh, it's quite lovely, actually. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. (laughs) Hopefully I'll get to claim it back. She then, like, looks towards all of the Gengu, Drow, and all these other people who gathered, pauses for a moment, and then just looks and says, Hundred gold for every head in the room. Make it happen, boys. Her wings ascend. She takes a moment to fling a dagger at the skylight. It shatters, and she flies out. Well then. (laughs) Well, okay. As she does that, you hear the metal cling again, and you feel the floor shake. Almost as if, like, around your feet, it's almost like someone created quicksand in the floor, but it's hardwood. The gravity in the room is changing and pushing you down. Oh, weird. I thought it was like a thunder wave. No. Nope. Oh, shoot. Interesting. It's like the room itself is lowering itself. Interesting. And you could basically all just kind of hold on for the ride as this room literally caves in on itself. And you fall. Oh, boy. Well, okay, then. Like, this, this happens a lot. And this screen cuts to black. The screen, we meet back up in a very unfortunate place. It looks like the boiler room has been converted into a dungeon. And you're all in there behind poorly implemented bars. <laughs> oh. It oh, was, no. You're in the crappiest prison you've ever seen. <laughs> We've been in better looking prisons than this, right? Have we been in a prison before? I don't remember. I mean, I've been in a prison before. I don't know what you guys For what? Tim Shell doesn't do prisons, and even we would do one better than this. Well, some of us. Eh, you know what? Never mind. That's not important. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, you see that they're all kind of coming to and kind of, you know. Yeah. Uh, what do you do? Lawrence, I, I, gone. Am I. You're, yeah, Lawrence is gone. You're there. Lawrence is gone. Uh, it wasn't her, which makes you think it's the other thing. Yeah, there's lots of things happening right now. Oh, okay, you guys are awake now, that's great. Um, didn't want to leave without you. No. You guys finally planning your breakout? There's like a teasing voice from the corner of the room. My eyes just slowly drift over to the corner. <laughs> because of Lawrence, did you see a child? Well, they're a chaos gremlin. They have red hair, a big wizard hat, kind of like black and orange attire. And they just kind of wave at you. If you guys want to get out, just let me know. I have knock. I'm, I could get out at any time. I'm just choosing not to. Why? What? Would you, you didn't introduce them to me. I'm I'm hurt, Nia. I mean, it didn't really come up in conversation. 
These these are my friends. This is Marzipan. Like the cookie? Sure. Yes. There's another boy sitting next to Marzipan who like looks like they want to die. Like as soon as words came out of Marzipan's mouth, their face their hand was on their face. Oh. And he just goes, Well, see, here's the thing. <clears throat> This this dungeon is the only dungeon in Castle Lockridge. Meaning, the goons of the Bird Lady and the usual vampire goons are fighting for over technically whose dungeon this is. Because they're trying to imprison each other, but there's only one dungeon. Okay. <laughs> Why don't they just build a dungeon? I mean, cages can't be that hard to find. I mean, they did just get here. So, so they're try so they're trying to fight each other. There's only one dungeon with only one set of bars, which we're currently behind. And I'm currently sitting on their solution, which was they put a chalk line in the center of the dungeon and split it halfsies. Okay. <laughs> Wait, that was their solution? Mm -hmm. They're big, powerful, scary bad guys, and their solution was to was to share? Mm-hmm. They're, they're not very good at being bad guys then. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Kat? Hmm? What were you gonna say, Kat? Kat was gonna say a thing. She said, they're birds. <laughs> and he, they just kind of go, so if I sit on the line, technically, neither of them have me captive. Oh. Well. Okay, so if you walk out of the jail cell, you also won't be captive. I know. But they're fighting. But they're fighting for me, and I enjoy watching it. There's a voice in your head, Finley, that just goes, "Oh, I like this one." Yeah, I, I, knew I was you going. Would. To, I was going to say this kid gives me Ambrose vibes like a lot. <laughs> and they're just like, "It's a brilliant plan, right, Brighton?" And the other human sitting there just goes, "Like, please don't involve me in this." <laughs> Look, here's the truth of the matter. At any given point, we can come in and school these guards. We're just kind of biding our time. But if you want out... I mean, Lawrence has been... has been kidnapped. I don't know where you two were during the party when that happened. Um, oh, I was putting lemon in people's punch. Sure. Alright, that was like, you? Okay. We just see right. Anna Blink and just goes, You mother... <laughs> <laughs> and Kaelin just has to, like, hold his arms out. Cool the cannons. Cool... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm sure since we can leave whenever we want. Um, Nia, care to explain the stolen bow? Funny story. I I don't. It was theirs. I <laughs> and now it's mine. <laughs> and now it's mine. <laughs> Such an eloquent story. What a riveting truth tale. of the matter is I do not remember how I got this bow, but it's fine. I stole it. That's all that matters. It's mine now. So Brighton just kind of chimes in with just like, you said that they were a threat, so you infiltrated them and made off with their bow as soon as they got comfortable with you. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I totally wasn't stressing about it the entire time. Don't stress out too much. You need to just... Sit on, sit on that chalk line there and just stay, stay put, okay? Both of you don't cause any problems while I'm saving the day here. Marzipan just asks, but if this is a prison riot that we're about to start, we have to cause a little problems. No. Prison riot? Well, there's like... Like, one... how bad are we talking of a prison riot? These bars are falling off by themselves. We literally have to do nothing. There are three guards in this room. One is a vampire spawn, and two are, and two are drow. Hmm. And they're all Can currently not paying attention to us. <laughs> Can we just kill them, please? That tends the prison. Right? See, this is what we were talking about earlier. <laughs> yeah, see, see, this is what we mean. Right. Would you? Goes, you know, I could. If you guys want to get out, I could do the thing that I could do. And Marzipan just, like, seems to just excite. Just do it, do it, do it. <laughs> um, excuse me, what thing? He's got cool plant magic. <laughs> Ooh, plant magic. 
So he just kind of he just kind of like bends his finger and just goes like, "Vine cage, you all leave." And then they shrug. <laughs> oh, vine cage! Don't know that one. At this moment, uh, Mars. Marzipan holds out a little wand and just taps the taps the bars, and he, the bar just falls over. I cast knock. <laughs> I think you cast fall down. I could do it again. Please do it again. They tap the thing, and another bar falls. That's <laughs> enough for like anyone to get out with those two bars gone at this point. Oh my god, these villains suck at being villains. <laughs> They do. No offense, but lots of offense. They're bad. I mean, it makes our job easier. It it's does. True. It does. So, uh, are you guys just gonna... Yes. I guess we just leave? Do we just leave? We, we just leave. leave. <laughs> we just leave. leave. Just leave. Walk, walk out. out. And as you say, Bye. you could leave it to us. You just see Brighton, like, close his eyes, and three just tendrils show up and spin around the cards, and they're all just, like, squirming out of the vines as you all walk out. <laughs> good. Good. Don't lovely. cause problems, please. Brighton lifts his finger, and the three vines hit the ceiling, knocking the three out, and then they just go back to sitting down on the line. <laughs> oh, all right. Good. You, you are in, You see the hole in the ceiling that was made by this winged drow? Um... And you realize you only fell, like, three levels. So there's, like... It, but Castle Lockridge is stupid. So there's one set oh. of stairs that leads up to another hall. Then you have to walk down that hall, climb the other set of stairs. Walk down that hall, climb the third set of stairs, and then you're back in the place you were. <laughs> okay. So you're going down three hallways to get back to where you Okay. Okay, um, that's complicated, but okay. You're just going down just a couple hallways and some steps. That's it. Yeah, All Castle right. Lockridge wasn't intelligently built. Um, as you guys are kind of walking into this hall, though, Andre, you feel like this is a familiar thing because you feel like there are like lights looking for you. And mm. as, with that high passive perception, you turn around and you see a were raven, but from its eyes are like the best way to put it is searchlight beams. Interesting. And Very interesting. You get this, and it's just like looking around. Mm. Obviously, getting into those lights is a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. So everyone roll stealth. <laughs> wait, oh, wait. No. I have a disadvantage because heavy armor. I'm going to say you could have advantage for pointing it out, but if you like sneakily pointed out to Finn, you could grant Finn a lack of disadvantage, if you'd like. I will do that. I, I don't want my girl to be disadvantaged. <laughs> oh, I, cool. I want, this, I want this little moment. Uh, Andre, you kind of, like, pull Finn to the side, and what is your hush-tush talk? Uh, I just want a moment of the girls. <laughs> 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 be every shipper ever. <laughs> okay, so Andre just kind of, like, slowly links her arm through fins and leans into her ear and she's like hey so see that over there <laughs> i look up you do see the bird oh yeah let's let's avoid that okay <laughs> okay okay finley's gonna she's... like try to be impressive and just be like super stealthy. I already rolled. It was a natural 20. <laughs> oh, good. Yes. Stealthiest you've ever seen Finley, Andre. Before Finley stealths, Andre will kiss her on the cheek. <laughs> oh. Oh. I would like, I would, I would give myself disadvantage for that. <laughs> because flustered? Yes. This is our podcast. We can do whatever. We can be self indulgent this way. Anna covers your mouth, Finn, so that way you don't scream. <laughs> oh. Um, so you all just. Plus, like, I was screaming more just like a. <laughs> <laughs> you all just kind of make it into these corners of the hall and avoid these lights very quickly. Before the steps, there are three open doors. And then the steps. Would What are you. Calum just kind of looks to you guys and goes, well, since this turned out to be an actual, like, sneaky adventure, are we gonna... 
Are we going to check what's in these rooms and collect stuff and then... <laughs> Left. Left? Left room. Okay. Are we going to split up or do we all want to go in room by room? Well, Just splitting rugs. up is usually how, you know, people get picked off one by one. And I'm not about that life today. So let's stay together. <laughs> Anna just kind of looks over towards Nia and just goes, well, you've been roped into one of our adventures, friend. <laughs> oh, all right. Sure. You, there's no avoiding it. You're one of us now. <laughs> oh, okay. And great. Complimentary t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Buy them on campfire. We have those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> wait, wait, was that the thing we were supposed to get? I'm working on it. <laughs> so, uh,. You all go into the leftmost room, um, and you just kind of see cots. Like, by cots, I mean someone threw down their bedroll and ran kind of deal. Uh-huh. And the talon marks along the room makes you think that this is a group of bird bandits who are trying to, who set up just for the long haul. And this is kind of a safe room for them. It's kind of cute. That is kind of cute. What do you guys want to do in this room? Sorry, just kind of pauses and like straightens up the bedrolls a little bit. Oh. Even if they, 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 they did kidnap us. Kidnap us. They did kidnap us. You don't have to be nice to them. But being nice to people is usually how we save the day. That is true. And make friends. So, see, I, if I make this one bird, evil bird man's bed, and he comes back and sees that I've done that, and he knows it was me because I'm going to, um... Are you going to leave a note or something? Well, I don't know if he can read. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but sure, a note would, uh, a note would probably work. So she just kind of, like, draws a little stick figure that kind of resembles her. And also, she draws a tiny heart, and she sets it there nicely. There! Oh now, he knows we're, now he knows we, we can be friends, and then maybe he'll come back and save the day. I've done this before. Usually, if I touch a bad guy or, or something, I... They end up living at my house. I don't know that I want... I mean, it happened the first time when I got my dog <laughs> and I punched a goblin <laughs> off of my dog and, and then I got a dog. And... <laughs> I, can just, I can just see the TV static look on Nia's face. Yeah, she's kind of zoned out. <laughs> so, and then I touched a tiny thing that was ice and it turned from blue to purple and now it's, it lives in my house. I don't really want a bird man living at my house, but if that's the way to get it okay, on our Okay, sorry, sorry, that. sorry, calm down, breathe. <laughs> that is so funny because that is the scariest <laughs> Every time I touch a bad guy, they become my friend. That is what sorry is done. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I mean, if that's how you all do things here, then sure, whatever. Uh, rogues, are you guys gonna do anything? Uh, also, Finley, you had interest in this room. Are you gonna look through stuff? Search, please. Yes. <laughs> do uh, all the rogues get to? Yeah, all, it's all the rogues and, and Finley because Finley, Finley has. Are you guys here later? So, mm, no. Mm? moving in they mm-hmm. they're 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 not by legal bind but they are basically uh basic why they are in law rogue <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to see if it was actually in law rogue yet but i i don't think so is calem doing the search if he's rogue oh yeah i guess he can <gasps> oh my god no i cannot i can't i keep is this investigation yeah Yes. Okay, so that's an 18. God damn it. I don't... I'm rolling, like, I just rolled another natural 20. It Ooh. fucking sounds like I'm faking <laughs> my rolls, but I'm not, and I hate it. No, I, be- I believe you. That's we awesome. believe. The Plus fact four. Were... Wow. The fact that you were, were worried about it being, looking like you were f- fudging your rolls makes me believe that you weren't fudging. <laughs> yeah. It... Who actually fudges their rolls to make you have multiple... Not twenty. Not 20. It, because that's so obvious, though. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. You have to believe it because it's so. 
Yeah. It's true. Anyway. If you're if you're smart, you'll fudge like an 18 or like a 15. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't not that I know. <laughs> 12 kind of thing. Anyway, um so Nia, your investigation lets you find a couple of health potions. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. And anyone want these? Squishies for I have, I have healing magic, so I'm good. I'm an absolute yeah. unit, so I don't need any. But thank you. <laughs> oh my god. Was that in character? <laughs> uh, it wasn't, but then it was, so I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> good. Yourself an absolute fucking unit, and my <laughs> day has been made. Finley <clears throat> calling herself an absolute unit is amazing. <laughs> hey, she's, she's more comfortable with her body now. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, Good for Finley. Uh, uh, Finley, your amazing investigation. Um, you find some notes. They're in mm-hmm. common, and they look like they look like the bandit equivalent of sticky notes being tossed passed from one student to another in the classroom. <laughs> there's, like, there's like bird tic tac toe. <laughs> Oh my god. Bird or tic tac toe? There's a couple in. Oh, uh, Andre, what was your. What's the difference? Like the marks are made with their talons? Yes. Uh, Good. Andre, what was your investigation? 30 20. Yeah, you, you come across them in Thieves' Camp, which only you can kind of translate, you know? Oh. So, Finn's, yours kind of are like. The common ones are very simple. They're at. Some of them are just like a piece of paper and one of them says like a parchment boulder shears question <laughs> mark and then one says like I call the top I, I call far right and it's like very it's always so informative to learn of the tactics of the enemy <laughs> <laughs> Andre, Andre meanwhile words you find one that's actually interesting. Um, mm-hmm. Most of them are written in Thieves' Cant and have something like, haha, it's in Thieves' Cant, so fucking Gerald can't see it. What a, what a bitch. <laughs> wow. Um, most of the Thieves' Cant ones are written to bully one of the Kenku in this place. <laughs> um, okay. So mean. But there's one that's interesting, and it says, um, you, did you notice that this is the biggest assault we've done yet? And then in another text, like an, uh, clearly another penman, you know? Mm-hmm. Just like, yes, the Empress seems kind of in over her head, followed by uh, wonder why, and then don't question, we make money. <laughs> Interesting. Mm-hmm. You do pick up through, although, uh, Andre, you do pick up on another thing when the thieves can't, which is simply that all of these people they're in like a thieves guild, but it's they're not like a, they're not like a cult where they all have the same goal. It's more like it's more like it's independent contract work. Okay. Like each, each drow, each like each member of this bird lady who was seemingly dubbed the Empress, each member of the Empress's brigade is essentially a hired hand. Okay. Which cool. Interesting for you, because I feel like you kind of know your way around that world. Yay. Okay. Uh, so I just imagine Andre's, like, having this moment as Nia's just, like, passing out health potions and Finley's just like, is that an X or an O? <laughs> uh, Finley, because you did get an at 20, though, uh, you do find a little, like, golden key. This Interesting. And it's a surprise tool that will help us later. <laughs> is it magical? Mm, no. It just looks like it is a little golden key that will probably open something brought in by one of these brigands. Cool. As you leave this room, there's one more room in this corridor and the stairs. You can absolutely choose to avoid the other door, and then there's steps. What do you do? Like, you could choose to avoid every room in here if you want. I will tell you if a room is giving off a vibe. I mean, we can just look in and see what's in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just have a look. Open, open the door. Um, you guys peek in. 
and you see the best way to put it is it looks like a dinner party is happening mm. except I all see. the dinner attendants have like red on their face and it's probably not pasta sauce oh, oh. Is that blood? they're hey. all they're all pale white too with like gaunt eyes that glow some of them look humanoid but some look like kobolds and okay. they all have big fangs. They're all vampires. Hmm, alright, time oh to leave. Never mind. Oh, oh, Sorry for intruding. Oh. I don't want to be dinner. Let's go home. <laughs> you all just like zoom up the stairs as you avoid this vampire dining hall. I love that image of us just opening the room. They all stare at us and we're like, Bye! <laughs> And like, we just noped out of them. Oh, We're just like, sorry for disturbing you. It just cuts back to all of them who look at this, look at each other, shrug, and go back to their meal, and you realize it very much is spaghetti. Anyway! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they were just really pale. Or it could, it could, it could, the, the meat could be something else. Of blood. Yeah, the meat could be something else, but there are no. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, as you make it up the second set of stairs, um, you come across like at the in the stairwell. There's like a fist fight going on between okay. between a, like a vampire spawn and a drow, and like they're not using any of their magic. They're just fucking slugging it out on the stairwell. <laughs> What's even going on anymore? <laughs> What's happening? Fight! 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 Oh no! Be quiet! Sorry, no. Sorry, no. Then I know when there's action, and I want to see who wins. Caleb puts his tail in the way and like trips up both of them, and they fall down the stairs. Good. He's now, like, Caleb, oh. that wasn't very nice. I had to add to my KO count somewhere. <laughs> Caleb's kill count. <laughs> oh my god, no! I don't want that to be a thing. I mean, he's got it. So if, there's yeah, we all have one. You come up to this room, and there's, like, these chandeliers. It's another very long, gaunt hallway. I think, like, if you've ever seen the inside of the Tower of Terror ride, like, that's the vibe. Which I have not. Just very, just, it's a, it's a creepy vibe. It's over-the-top spooky. <laughs> cool. Candelabras, just, just the one. Nice. Big tapestries, all it. <laughs> cool. So, uh, <clears throat> There's three rooms. Um, as far as I can tell, none of them are giving out a necessarily important vibe, but they are there. Okay. Would I know if these are like bedrooms or something? You do know one of them is a bedroom. You've been in this castle a bit. One of them's a bedroom. Yeah. One of them is like one of them's like a study, which is just like a desk in some empty space, and uh, and one of them is like. One of them is like a smaller kitchenette. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we can just peek in. Yeah. I'll take the, the study room and I'll just open the door and see if there's anything interesting. Just real fast. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nia, you peek into the first door and you see four drow and four vampire spawn fighting. All right. I'm just going to close the door. Don't go in that room. They're just going to take care of themselves, I guess. Why is there so much violence in this castle? Our castle doesn't have near as much violence. Anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, on the inside of the castle, there's not too much violence unless one of the That's roses true. steals each other's stuff. Oh, there had to have been a rose fight club. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying to think about. Uh, Andre... When you saw Nia run towards one room, are you probably going to do the same to another? Mm, yeah, sure. Okay. I don't know if... I, I don't know what these rooms are, but, like, yeah. I guess the the one that we have meta knowledge of is being in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I think if someone else wanted to check out the third door, like, I kind of like this idea that when you make it to the hallway, it's just, like, poking guys. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, we can, I'll 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 go check. Okay. Thank you. Don't uh, do anything bad. Um, Andre, on the inside of your room, you see three sleeping were ravens, but they're like 
perched up in the in the high parts of the room, and there's like a bag of gold on the floor. I'm just gonna yoink that. Roll side of hand. Okay. I know you don't. I know. I know you don't have to, but like, <laughs> come on. I know. Okay. You're so, <laughs> funny story. So that's a flat eighteen, and I have a plus thirteen to sleight of hand. Oh so. my god! Oh so my word! Wait, what is that? That's an eleven. That's a thirty-one. I just did the math. <laughs> Andre <laughs> will kill us all. You just with her good good rolls. So, like Andre went off to the right. There's a swift breeze, and she's back with a bag of gold. <laughs> And Nia, you like turn as you felt like a chill hit you and like defensive nature kicks in. It's just Andre like spinning a bag of gold that clearly has the enemy brigands insignia on it. You know what? I'm not even going to question where you got that. I'm Good not idea. Even, I'm not House even going fund? To. Wait, would you say cat? House fund? <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. I'm okay with this. <laughs> Uh, sorry, you look in a room, and there's a cage. Ooh. Is there anything in the cage? There's, like, there's, there are dog sounds, growling sounds. Oh, this is my time to shine! <laughs> uh, I go investigate the cage. Do I need to roll investigation? Or are can you I see them? walk right up to it, or are you gonna, like... Yes. Yes, I am. I jump. said that in a tone that I'm regretting it. But don't, uh, but you can see this. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it, it looks like a wolf man, maybe. But they have just like red everywhere. And that's probably not their natural coloration. <clears throat> and they also have Is it- very big, like, thingies. Okay, is it is it is it more humanoid wolfman? Like I can tell it's a lycanthrope, or is it more wolfy wolfman? Where sorry wouldn't be able to tell that it's a wolf man. Um, actually, sorry would know exactly what kind of creature this is. Even though it's oh. been a while, sorry has encountered this kind of creature before. It is a knoll. Ah, it is okay. A vampire knoll. Okay. No. So Mm-mm. animal handling won't work. No, it is a sentient creature, but like you instantly piece together that is a null, and that is a null that has become a vampire. Mm. Hello, Ooh. vampire no. null. Please don't suck my blood or uh, bleh bleh bleh, as they say. It jumps um, up the cage, but it is like to, like you know the way dogs do barking and like biting outside of it. But they're, okay. they're probably enough that that's not a problem. Okay, okay, we're gonna... <laughs> Can I cast Charm Person on this creature? Give Is me... that a thing I'm capable of? Because Let of... Check. It's... Let me check. What is the... Is there an intelligence limit? Uh, it's... Like, what do you mean, intelligence like limit? If it's, if it's below a certain intelligence, you can't do it. Something like that. Uh, it's... You attempt to charm a humanoid, it must make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, does it have to be a humanoid? Is it is it humanoid or is it? It is, an, it is technically an undead. But hmm. I'm willing to let that slide. Um, uh, the hard and fast thing would have been like, if it's below this intelligence, it will not work. But... No, it just says uh, the charmed creature regards his friendly acquaintance. But I think all all Sari would want to do is to calm it down so that she can investigate can. it without becoming a vampire. Okay, uh, I need to roll, right? So mm-hmm. save. Yep, I'm only using my first level spell slot, so you good. Uh, one moment. Yeah, no, it's got a minus two to whatever it had, and I rolled a two, so like. So you rolled a zero. Well, oh, sorry, it's a one. It's Dave a was fifteen. Yeah, yeah, I got a one on that. So it's just yeah, a puppy. Okay. It's a puppy now. Hello, can you speak? Can it speak? Um, it barks and yips in a language 
but you know either Bissell or Noel. Hmm. I don't. Then it sounds like dog noises. Hey, does anyone know Abyssal or Noel out there in the other room? Uh, I found I found a thing. Does anyone speak do. Abyssal? I speak Abyssal. Finn! Mm? Come here. Okay. <laughs> this is, um... This is Bitey. By the gods. <laughs> Sorry, get away from that right now. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. I used... Uh, I played, like a little soft sensual music on my pan pipes and now no. it and now it's uh it's chill Sorry, and why is I, blood I, on its I mouth <laughs> because, do because all what else would in? charm you what else would charm you shay i feel like i do all of you come in that <laughs> sensual music thing or I mean, sorry. When Finley says "by the gods," I imagine that triggered a like "oh my yeah. god" reaction from everyone. <laughs> just everyone else come into this room just to see yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You all. So just anyway, this is Bitey. I, oh I he god. might have a real name, but I've just been calling him Bitey because he keep he kept biting at the chains and uh -huh. the cage. Uh, but Finley, you speak Abyssal, right? Yes, I speak Abyssal. So you can ask him his real name, right? Why would I want to know his real name? Because I want to know his real name, and you do it for me because we're friends. <laughs> Please? <Ooh. laughs> You're gonna owe me one after this one. Sure. Beastly creature, what is your name? I say in abyssal. <laughs> Words. <laughs> do you understand me? This is. <laughs> yes, I do. Get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my no girl. Name. No name, only job. Job. Watch. Mm. Bite. Watch. Bite. Kill. I'm guessing. Flailing nods. Mm hmm. All right. Yeah. Um. No name. Only bite. And watch. Bitey it shall be. Tell him his name is Bitey. No. <laughs> no. Finley, please. Caleb just kind of turns. Can we go? I think that would be a good idea. Sorry, you Don't can't. Take this is... No. No. Charm you want to get him on the way out, you're more than welcome to, but I think there are more urgent matters. Charm to person here. only lasts an hour. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, you can't. Take... This isn't even an. This isn't even like a companion. It's. Like, no, this is a person. Yeah, it's just yeah, a... but he's a gnoll, so that's gotta become a person. There's a there's he's still a person, though. A vampire gnoll. Yeah, but we save people. We don't leave them locked up in cages. Well, sometimes I wonder why. Listen, I mean, we left my friends locked up in a cage. I think we can leave this gnoll here. Yeah, they chose to be locked in the cage. <laughs> I don't know. He seems it. pretty happy. Just let it go. We can't. We can't take it with us. Him. Okay, we can't, we can't. fine. I'm gonna drag you out here if I have to. I I would say you could try, but you are very tall and very strong. And although I am very nimble, I am also very light. Out. It would be very easy. Out. For you. Yeah. I'm, okay. Out. Okay. Go. Okay. Shoo. Shoo. <laughs> get. She, she gets. <laughs> <laughs> um. And you make it to the next set of stairs. And you climb up. Um, as you make it up, you do see at the end of this hall are two drab with wings, like the Empress herself. And they're kind of like... They're supposed to be watching, but they look very disinterested. Uh, and there's Shall two we say hi? And there's two other rooms before you would have to reach them. And the room on the right has like a magical feeling coming from it. Poor guru. Do we take care of the guards first then? I I assume you mean take care of as in like the stab and kill and not in the offer them a hug and a friend. Kind yes. Andre. Yeah. Andre. Yes. Um Roll investigation because you know something everyone else doesn't. Oh, okay. 
One second. Okay, that is a 17. You remember that everyone in this room who works for the Empress is a hired hand. Meaning, right, by, right. meaning by their nature, they can be bought. <laughs> okay. Uh. House fund, no! <laughs> House fund. <laughs> but also, well, she's she rich as heck. She has her own money. Like, she probably wouldn't, like, get, no. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be funnier if you paid them with the money of the enemy. That's true. That's very true. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so Andre's just gonna like. Well, hold on. We just want them to like not say anything and let us go about our business, right? Pretty much. That's, that's the plan. Okay. So Andre's just gonna saunter over there. <laughs> not a care in the world. <laughs> Okay, before you do this, though, I would recommend the bag that has the enemy's money on, uh, the, the, yeah, the enemy's money is in a bag that has their sigil on it. I would recommend taking it out of the bag so that they don't see that sigil, so that they don't know it's their own money. <laughs> Good point. We stole your money, and we're going to pay you with it. Yeah. Mm, okay, so she's just kind of like, okay, before she walks over there, she's just going to take out, like, I don't know. I imagine she has... Well... Yeah, I'm gonna say she has another pouch that she has some of her own money in. And she just kind of like... I don't know. I would say she switches it out, but she probably just puts the, the marked bag away and takes out the actual one. Because it's too much work to just switch the money. So she's just yeah. kind of like... Yeah. Sorry, I don't get... Uh, the, the, the fun is not practical right now. <laughs> oh, okay, so she does that and then she goes over. The two look kind of cock their heads. Hello there. Are, are you authorized? Ah, uh, see, here's the thing. Um, no. No, I'm not. But See, me and my friends were, um, you know, doing stuff, you know, need to head down this hallway. And there are certain people here that would probably try to stop us if we did that. You are such people. Now, here's the thing. She just, like, takes out <laughs> the bag and just holds it up. She's like, what say... You let us do what we need to do, and I hand over this. The two look at each other, and then just go, we would find that agreeable. Ah, excellent. Such a pleasure doing business with you. You hand them the bag, and before you walk away, the first one just goes, you wouldn't mind, of course, and like peers into the bag. And basically is checking that you're giving them real money yep. before you give them the slip. It's all, it's all real. The two look to each other and nod and just kind of give you a half bow. The pleasure was all ours. And they walk into another room. Gods, I love that woman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was just going to shoot them from over here, but that, that works too, I guess. Sure. <laughs> That's how we do things. We think yeah. a lot the same, Nia. Yeah. Diplomacy saves the day again. <laughs> Yay! Bribe Sorry, high fives, Roman. So there's a room that has like a magical air, and then another room where the only thing you can hear from it is like coughing. Hmm. We should go look at that. Is it? No, you all can handle the, the coughing. Does it sound like Lawrence? Um, what did you say, Rowan? Oh, I said, is it familiar coughing? Does it sound no. like Lawrence? No. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I do want to investigate that, though. Yes. Can peek we in. investigate them both? Yes. Sorry, and Rowan, you peek in and see uh, members of the Empress's crew uh, choking on vampiric mist. Ah! Okay. Well, 
Sorry takes her cape and immediately swirls it to like cover her mouth. And do you just book it out or do you do anything else? She does she bends down and takes part of the cape and covers Rowan's mouth and says, Yep, vampire, no, bad, don't want to choke on that. No. Should we run, Rowan? You wanna do anything or Well what is what ha- what is happening? Are they vampires themselves? Is this how they're getting turned into vampires? It appears so. I see. Do you want to become a vampire? No. <laughs> then I suggest we run. Okay, I guess. Mm-hmm. I feel kind of bad leaving these people, but I also don't know what else to do in this situation, so yeah, I'll, fo- I'll follow Sari out. These two factions are fighting tooth and claw. So, tis, tis the way. <clears throat> yeah. You all kind of walk into this room, and it's a library, this other room. Uh, ooh. There are, how many of you in currently present? One, two, three, five, Carol and Anorix, seven. There's eight books. So do each of you want to take a book? Sure, Everyone. yes. Sure, let's go for it. Sure. Uh, everyone pull a D8. A D8? Okay. I got a 7. Okay. Eight. I have a 4. 6. 8, 7, 4, 6. Uh, I four. got a 5. Okay, so everyone got a different book, thank god. Um, so, the 8, which I believe was Mia. Right? I got a, I got a seven. Oh. oh, that was you, Kat? Yes. Okay. You got book number eight. Uh, you find a lovely little fairy tale about a turtle who's racing a bunny. Oh. And you're reading about this turtle who's racing the bunny, and you're kind of flipping through. And there's a picture of the tortoise passing up the bunny, and then you flip to the next page, and there's no pictures. And the typical font is gone. And it looks like this is like a set of blank pages that someone scribbled over. And you just see the words, it's coming for me, over and over and over again. Like, layered on top of each other to make this page almost completely black. And then flip it over and the story continues as if those pages just weren't there. <laughs> That's uh, spooky as hell! Uh, ha, ho, hee hoo, okay. Hee <laughs> hoo. Finley's like, this is kind of a... Pointless but catchy story. I, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and it happens one more time in the back cover with "Dear God, don't let it eat me." Dear God, don't let it eat me. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Replacing like where the typical back cover would have like the, you know, the lovely like this is a story about this. It's just replaced, but like it's all written as if it was like lined together. You know what I mean? Spooky. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna like re uh I'm gonna basically say that to everybody, like, oh this is weird, and then I'll just put it in my bag or whatever's <laughs> with me. Uh, book number seven, that is me. Yes. You find a book that tells the stories of whispers of a cult. All you know is that they call themselves the servants of the serpent, and that's all you got. Oh. All right, weird, weird cold front of the mill. All right, uh, six. Who got six? Uh, six. That was me. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you learn that this group that the Empress is running, it's a book about them. They go by the Carrion, which is the group that was in Asylum, but apparently it's a name that different factions take up if they want to depose nobility. It's more of like a status symbol than a real. Cool. Cool. Very cool. Uh, someone got a five and someone got a four. I got the five. I, I have a four. Okay. Uh, five is... Five is Rowan. Rowan, you learn about the Lockridge family. Specifically that before Lawrence, it seems like that there's only been one ruler forever. 
like mm. the family images are all the same and it always looks like there's like a young boy who's growing up to be like turn 18 just the same guy again kid's gone interesting and sorry you read a book about different kinds of magic including two forms of magic that are common in Timoret that most other kingdoms don't know about too well. Dunamancy and Hemomancy. Dunamancy is the magic of gravity, and there's a, a picture of some rings that matched what the Empress was wearing, and that's what causes the, cave, the ground to cave in and all that. Ooh. Mm. You also Ooh, this is about gravity magic. You also learn that those rings are easy to break and reform. But if they're broken, the person who's wearing it can't use that magic for the rest of the day. Guys, I think we need to break her bracelets and rings and all her jewelry. You also learn that hemomancy is using your blood to cast spells. Ah, that explains the vampires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's kind of your lore dump. <clears throat> You do also, uh, Andre, though, you do also find in your reading that there are two swords in Timoret of great power. Uh, and you kind of realize that they, you likely know who forged them. These are the swords of sinew and steel and the sword of feast and famine. Nice. Naming structure alone, I think, gives it away. Yeah. And with mm. that... You have kind of torn through everything magical in here, and for the sake of keeping things moving, because we are kind of starting to reach a, you know, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, you are, you did bribe the guards already, so you guys kind of have a moment to talk as you make it up to this final corridor. So I'm going to let you guys go for a minute and RP this out and your findings. And then we're going to kind of have to rapid fire this. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are kind of going up the stairs to this final, this final hall, and there's peace. There's a moment to breathe. So uh, what exactly is the plan here? I mean, well, rescue Lawrence, number one. Right, right, yes. Mm -hmm. Probably stop the vampires from blood sucking the world that'd be good yes good yeah side mm -hmm. quest um i think uh we need to break the uh ladies bracelets why do you say that oh because in this book and she kind of like holds it open it says that the bracelets uh control the gravity so that she can do the whole cave-in thing and like make the ground all weird but if we break the bracelets then she has to wait a whole day before she can use the magic again to reforge them. But also in this book, and she like flips a cu couple pages, there's things about blood magic. And I really don't want to read into this a lot more, but we should probably stop that if that's happening. Yeah. Yeah, both of those sound like good, good plans. Yeah. Or good concepts, really. They're not really plans. Right, right. Goals. Goals, yes. Now, how to accomplish these? I don't think we ever have a plan. We kind of just go in and figure oh, it okay. out as we go. I mean, at least we have goals. That's one thing. Yeah. We have in our True. favor. True. Well, in order to save Lawrence, we have to find him. So, I suppose we should keep looking. Yes. Would I know where he might be? If they weren't in these levels of the castle. The only place that would be worth checking is the grotto outside. Then let's head that way then. Because clearly he's not here. As you guys... Unless he was at the vampire feast, but I highly doubt it. <clears throat> As you guys make it up this final set of stairs, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I got the book about like his family that's true and, that's important to mention. yeah um you could just so say that I, you relay that information okay yeah then i i relay that information that it kind of seems like this the same guy has just been around for a really long time 
and that um, there was like a drawing of him with what seemed like his son, and then the next image, the son wasn't there. And that's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. Any other? I think to that, Caleb goes. That could have been who kidnapped him, maybe. Hmm. Yes, most likely, probably. I don't know who else it could be. There has been sort of rumors of obviously people going missing and all of that that tends to happen. Um, and would I know about this just one guy that mm. just exists? Oh, Lord Lockridge is a well-known mystery. Yeah. The name sort of um, carries on. There haven't really been any new rulers until Lawrence showed up. Hmm. Interesting. And so, that? most likely whoever is in that picture who seems to be killing children might have the same fate for Lawrence if we don't get there quickly, so let's go, huh? Yeah. Uh, Rev, yours was... Oh, yours was the swords. I think. Oh, and there was the carrion. Then it's the carrion and the swords. Those are the things. Um, anyway. <clears throat> Any other mentions before we go? I'll take that as a no. You guys open the doors. And you see Marzipan and Brighton. And they are fighting side by side. Uh, against, like different guards of the different factions and they've basically knocked out a few as they turn to you as the doors open and they just go oh welcome welcome back to the how, room how did you get here before us <laughs> by all accounts it doesn't make sense uh magic uh -huh. no what sure also also he holds out a, they hold out a broom uh -huh. and He's just, they just go, there might be a broken window in that boiler room. <laughs> you know what? I told, whatever. It's fine. Have you seen Lawrence? That's where we were actually about to go. We figured the only place left to check was outside, but. Yeah, because we've checked every room in this castle and he's not here. Well, <gasps> does that mean Brighton just goes, no, you can't. I'm going to do it. You can't. No, I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm just going to tell you right now, no. They leave the room, and you start walking outside, without a word. Oh, boy. Mm, you might want to give them at least a 50-foot sort of area, just in case anything goes wrong. I step it's, back. The best way to put it is you hear Stitch-like sounds, just like excited. <laughs> exactly. <And> there's like... <laughs> okay. Horse? Like, there's... Like, <laughs> Coming. And Marzipan just runs back in and goes, Remember how I thought it was weird that there were like really old, kind of decrepit train tracks in this castle? Okay. Well, I did some digging. You flew up and you saw the tracks. I flew up and I saw the tracks. <laughs> and it turns out they lead to like a big garden in the back. And instead of walking, you could just take this weird train kind of thing. Oh, if if it saves time, sure. I started it up already for you, to, for you guys. Oh, so nice. Thank you. Okay. Mm, then... are, are we sure it's not going to explode? 50-50. I'll take my chances. Let's go. Sure, whatever. Alright. Uh, instant weird thing about this train. It's like... The three carts don't let you kind of go in. Really, the only place to stand is like on top of the carts. It's like three mine carts without the top, without the push part, strung together by a locomotive. Okay. And uh, Marzipan just kind of casts a spell. You hear the steam whistle blow, and this old, decrepit train just starts pugging along. <laughs> We should probably get on that before it gets too far ahead. Uh, yeah. yeah. You all just kind of jump on, no problem. It's very cool. <laughs> and as you jump, though, 
there's the sounds of like hooping and hollering in the night air as the empress sweeps down and sees you all on this train and just like kind of scouts you out and just goes well i suppose this is the best place to hunt you down you've been causing me quite a pain and like hey and then she has to fly back to catch up to you because of the time it took her to monologue <laughs> <laughs> You're in basically like a chase. We chase. So the I guess the um, Carrion has a theme of train <laughs> train themed fight scenes. Uh, so um, I'm not gonna have you roll initiative because it's not time. Uh, but the Empress is basically just flying fast to try and catch you while you're on this train and I'm gonna go down the chat and you guys can tell me what you're gonna do to slow her down this could involve attacks but we just won't have the proper initiative order for the sake of time hmm you just have cool royal lady flying at you fast with a with a knife so we have to do <laughs> just a regular knife <laughs> It's not a. It's not a. It was a joke. I'll show you what her. Uh, like a sword like. knife. Like a stabbing sword. implement. Like a stabbing implement. Okay. Okay. So how funny would it be if she just had like a kitchen knife though? <laughs> what it, it would be funnier if she was chasing us with a plastic butter knife. But True, you're right. <laughs> uh. So we're trying to stop her from hitting us, right? Like trying- hold her back. Yeah. Like you don't have. To okay. Go. This is exactly what I want to do. Okay. Um, can she make a strength saving throw? She absolutely can. Ooh, that wasn't bad. Um, though she does have minus two to strength. Uh, 16? Ooh, you just barely, barely made it. But I still get to do half damage, which means I'm going to roll those dice. Uh, so 12 points of damage because Sari pulled out her pan pipes and cast fourth level spell slot Arms of Hadar. Oh, sh- <clears throat> so here's what happens. She's flying at you and these black tendrils kind of circle around her. And sorry, you just kind of like have this moment of victory that ends when her blade, which has like a black half and a green half, just right through the, through the tendrils and flies through. Well, it was cool while it lasted. She does look like she sustained damage, though. That's like her, all I needed. Her flight is slowed. Anyone else have ideas? Oh, yeah, I do. What are you going to do, Finn? All right, I'm going to go into my mind space and I'm going to say, all right, Ambrose, showtime. And I'm going to call forth his like monstrous form and I'm going to cast Cause Fear, which is a, a wisdom save of 17. This is have, so we seen, have, we, have we seen Ambrose's monstrous form? Nope. One time, I think. Oh, oh no. Well, she's going to fail that, um, even with her bonuses. So Ambrose appears out of nowhere, and, like, they still look have, like, the ghosty bottom, but the top becomes incredibly muscular and almost, like, bull-like, with horned, like, muscular Ambrose. Horned, like, her, his face is completely different. It looks like a bull skull is on the top. And red and blurite eyes, and it just screams like a banshee. And she seems to fly back as this thing charges at her like a ball. <laughs> yeah, she's frightened now. She's like, she's still passively flying in her direction, but like she's craning herself back as far as possible. You know what I mean? Like she's keeping her distance, and you notice that that's become a problem for her sword because <laughs> she can't, you know. Yeah. So she kind of snaps her fingers, and the first of the three cards, there's three cards in the locomotive, starts bending to its, like, literally the metal starts bending and breaking. Uh, any other ideas on how to slow? It's It looks like she's becoming, the Fyrighton is doing wonders, like, 
it's going to be a lot easier to beat her now. Okay. Anyone got any ideas? Uh, Rowan, you got anything? Uh, uh, give me a second to think. I mean, I could just shoot her. I'm you just going to shoot her. You just shoot her. I'm just going to just do a regular just shoot. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Any special things from your special bow or no? Um. Mm, I mean, the fear's already slowing her down. I don't want to waste stuff if it's... That's fair. Yeah. Already doing stuff. So. Um. Okay. That is. Hold on. Where are you aiming? Um. You know what? I'll actually aim at her hand to see if I can knock any of the. Okay. Uh, jewelry smart, off. Smart. Hmm. Um. Okay. I'm sorry. This is a new character. I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, I okay. think that's a. 20 to hit if I'm doing my math correctly. That hits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. Um, okay, so that's just regular one bow plus the extra damage. Um, there's d6. Yes. Um, okay. Quick math. Uh, 11 points of damage, I think. Okay. This is the first yes. time she's actually, besides, sorry, she, so she took a direct bow shot. And with that 20, that does hit. Um, here's your choice. You can damage her, and it hits her, like, the palm of her hand. Or you can aim directly at the rings, break them, but she herself doesn't take damage. Um, I'll, I'll aim for the rings, yeah. So you do that, and you hear, all of you hear this shatter sound. And as they break, you see her hand, like, shrivel as magic just starts crumpling it. You just essentially created created a massive gravity field around her wrist. Hmm, all right. (laughs) Nice. So you see- I didn't mean for that to happen, but great. (laughs) Her wrist just bends in the most unnatural way possible, and she just lets out this cry and starts gripping it and just goes- I'll kill you for that. Eventually. For now. Pull back. And without a word, it looks like she just like flaps her wings once and just in a puff of smoke. Alrighty then. Alright. Broke her fucking wrist. (laughs) Oh Oh my god. Okay. With gravity magic. So I don't even have have gravity magic, and somehow I broke her wrist with gravity. Because her her trinkets had gravity magic on them. You need to imagine, like, you need to imagine that the air around her wrist became heavier to the point where it broke. (laughs) It's just not not a great thing. Gruesome. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. I, so yeah, the train cart ends with that wonderful image. (laughs) Wow. <laughs> Halloween episode. Who thought it would actually be spooky? Uh, so, yeah. I have written here that this is a moment to rest, but like, I don't think any of you took damage because you either avoided or charmed your way through all those encounters, which is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm good. Look at you all being rogues. Um, <clears throat> so with that... I didn't really do anything. You're about to do things. Oh, oh, fear. Into our fear. This character was just too cool. We lead into our final moment. There are these green torch lights coming from this grotto. Green lantern. Oh my god. Pale green weaving in. At this point, because the party started like at night. So, like, at this mm-hmm. point, it's like maybe 3 a.m., you know? Mm-hmm. But you all slept on the little ride here, so you're still awake, you know? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. So, it's like that weird blue before the sunrise, you know? Where it starts, where like, you can barely sense it's getting brighter, just a touch is a touch. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and as you enter these green lights, 
whistle in the night and go out. But the, the slight natural light is enough to see this large statue with like serpent like heads, except they end in grotesque faces that aren't serpentine at all. They look almost human. And they're just like, this fun and gross and it just, just doesn't look good. But dangling from one of those uh from one of these stone statue tubes is a cage. And coming from that cage, there sure are Lawrence sounds. <laughs> there sure are Lawrence noises. Lawrence sounds. <laughs> What are some good Lawrence sounds? Hello? Just give us a little <laughs> taste. <laughs> Hello? Is anyone here? I was left in this cage. <laughs> Hello? Absolutely <laughs> amazing. Good. Um, you sound so calm. <laughs> uh, Hello? I really don't like the fact that I have to stare constantly at these contra at these contorting faces. If anyone could save me, like that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. <laughs> are are there other people? No, nope. in- literally no. just him. Oh, so we don't see whatever he's talking about. Oh no, he's the contorted faces is the statue. Oh, okay. Like, his cage is, like, right next to one of the, like... Oh. Like, he's, he's basically had to see nothing but that light. Yeah, we should probably let him out or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um... I'll do it. Should, should we sneak over there? Do we need to sneak? Is I there can... anything worth sneaking? I okay, can we'll elbow the lock. Yeah, actually, Finn elbow the lock. Elbow the lock. I'm L-blad. gonna elbow the lock. <laughs> Eldritch Flags. Lift up her hand. And just like the ropes of the cage just fall on us. Oh, wait, that was a bad idea. <laughs> no. Oops. Oops. Just, like, Misty steps out and onto the floor gracefully, and like the magical aura almost has like bats coming out for a second, or like illusory bats. Just. That's so, fun. Just. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you for that. Uh, the save is much appreciated. <clears throat> You, you alright? I'm doing okay. Okay. That was weird. You left in a hurry? Were you being like... I mean, obviously you were kidnapped. You were in a cage. Are the people who kidnapped you still around? As you say that, the lights come back on. Uh-huh. Oh, at the ready. It's just kind of like... Lawrence just kind of goes, There you go. <laughs> That's your answer. And there's just like chittering and little like creepy yips from all corners as someone who looks like a spitting image of just a slightly older Lawrence appears except all colors drained they're either pale white or black and their cape ends in red they have like a cool Ah. set of like red jagged lines down their eyes though and just for peak goth black uh, black veil polish. Good, good, <laughs> good, good. And as they just kind of descend, you see that this the statue is in the center of like a stone pavilion in this grotto, you know? Mm-hmm. And so they walk up the steps to this pavilion and just go, wonderful. It appears that you've all managed to make it through this little game. But now you all can bear witness to the ritual then. You know, I'm getting real tired of these <laughs> dramatic evil monologues. <laughs> well then, if that's the case, they kind of like clap their hands twice and from their back, just ghostly visions just dance to the corners of the grotto. Just, It just looks like a bunch of ghosts were hiding behind their back and if they clap their hands all posh-like, they all just kind of flew to the sides. Ooh. I suppose we can get started. And uh they grab at a sword that is one half almost melting 
and one half pure, like, black energy. Cool. Ooh. Okay. Rules are simple. Rules are simple. I kill Lawrence, I win. You kill me, you win. Simple enough. But what if we don't? If I kill you, roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, um, that I didn't roll. Oh no. Oh no. That was bad initiative. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I'm totally not playing the light music. How dare you? Thirteen. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was okay, a seven. Eight. Not great. That's a twenty-two for Andre. Oh, <laughs> holy! I was a Thank lot of talk Andre. and not a lot of action. So okay. Um, I may or may not have rolled in that one. Uh, oh, so that's a five. Okay. Uh, let me... Where the hell are my dice? There they are. Ooh. Oh no. So, uh... For copyright reasons, I can't put the grim music from Hollow Knight here, but, like, imagine I could. I don't know what that music sounds like, so I'll just imagine... Uh... It's not, well, the song that's currently in my head is Spooky Scary Skeleton. <laughs> Oh my god. So we're fighting a bad yes, guy. Yes, good. Scary, 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 scary. Do, 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 okay, do, so Andre, I think you're up first. Lit. Okay. So. <laughs> lit. <laughs> it's lit, fam. <laughs> it's lit, fam. Okay. Um, let's see. See, here's the thing. I hate going first because I never know what I'm going to do. Um... Would you like to roll, like, an investigative check on the setup, even though... And I will count that against your action. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Okay. Also, uh, Shay, what was your initiative? It was a seven. It was bad. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, so yes. Roll investigation to see what you can pick up about the setup. Um, Fourteen. You see the ghosts in the corners, and you're Mm -hmm. realizing that they all have gone from just like sheet ghost look to faces and they're the faces of all of the children in that book that sh- that Rowan found oh no Ooh. oh shit oh shit <laughs> there's just kind of a vampiric grin as Andre makes this look of horror and just goes Next time, tell your friend to let the monologue keep rolling, shall you? <laughs> and all the like, you just hear all the children ghosts speak in a language none can understand. Oh hell no! <laughs> uh, um. Um. Okay. So, with that, uh. Andre is going to, uh, hmm, I think, okay, yeah, she's going to, uh, ex- mm, no, hmm, mm. why am I so indecisive? I hate this. Okay. Pick a I have too many cool things. That's, that's, that's the problem. I have too many things, too many options. Uh, you know what? Okay, just tried and true. I'm just gonna attack with um with a uh, uh what is the my the, the sword of light and shadow? I'm okay. wow <laughs> wow. I am slow. Okay, I'm gonna hit with the uh, light side. Good call. <laughs> Uh, okay. One second. La, 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 la. That is a uh, 19 to hit. That hits. Okay, lit. <laughs> Why do I keep saying that? Um, uh, okay, so sneak attack, yes, no. Um, are you running up at them? 
Um, yeah, I kind of have to because. Yeah, so I, I will so. say, I will say no this time. This is fine. This is very <gasps> fine. Saying no <laughs> once. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm trying to figure out if there's something else I can use. Oh, also, just to so get a feel for what this is, uh, arena-wise, you're in, like, a pavilion, so, like, think, like, a grassy grotto and everything. <clears throat> that creepy snake statue up in the corner, and, uh, it's, like, 3 a.m., so it's starting to get, like, that touch of bright, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, the sun is starting to come in. You get the idea. Now you know what you're up, what you're at. All right, so that is without sneak attack. That is a thirteen plus two because my fighting style gives me a plus two to damage rolls when I have a melee weapon in one hand. So, uh, fifteen, fifteen. Yeah, I can, I can math. Fifteen radiant. Okay. Or, yeah. You see them like you charge. On- at that horrible realization of the children, you know? Mm -hmm. And they take out their sword, and they lift it up, and you go right into the chest with them. Just in any other person, this would be a lethal kill. You just went right for the heart, you know? Mm -hmm. And you realize they raised it very high over their head, like, like they weren't even planning to bring it down. And as you do that, this green-blue light expels from them. And you see, like, the best way to put it is one of the ghostly figures, like the one you saw there, fly out and just discorporate into light. And another one of those ghosts rushes into the gap, fills it, and the wound covers itself. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. The grim returns. Oh my god. Me well. Uh, I don't like that. Part of me wants to action surge and hit it again, but Andre is probably just stumbling back like, what the hell? (laughs) It is going to take a moment. And as a legendary action, it is (laughs) to spin into like this black and red cyclone poof away like Lawrence did in a thing of bats and appear next to the bystanding spirits who raises the sword and they all cheer. Uh, Of course. (laughs) Next up in the order is the vamp, which is not great. Um, It moves very quickly uh just kind of seems to charge and then bounce away again and when it appears it shows up right next to lawrence and using the melting edge of the blade just cuts right at him and lawrence takes uh oh lawrence takes some damage and they just kind of like slink to the back clearly in pain Hmm. And on the end of its turn, it's going to like raise its arms as just like a string of just spiders and bats just seem to just appear in the grotto. They don't have any initiative, they're just there now watching. End of the turn, sorry, you're up. Alrighty. Nux crackles. Let's see, what have I got? What's the best spell? Did you just say Nux Crackles? <laughs> Sorry, do you want I wanna... did, what are you gonna do about it? Sorry, do you want to roll any sort of investigative check? You know what, sure. If I can take it as like a free... Yeah, yeah, deck like, okay. thing. like on dry, like, just... Wow. I... Well, I didn't do much, that was a nat 1 plus 3. Uh, so that's four. Those ghosts seem to be important. 
Yep, those ghosts look real important. Hmm. Does Thunder Wave hit ghosts? Thunder Wave hits anything. <clears throat> I'm saying because they're like immaterial objects. Like, they, they what did you damage? Side of stuff, so you can absolutely okay. swing for it. And would Sari, in seeing that the ghosts are important, see that the ghosts are bad, want to hurt her? <laughs> you did see one of them, like, leave the vampire, and another one immediately come back in so it continue the assault. Like, you all saw that. Uh-huh. So I'm not these, saying these are happened. bad, they do want to hurt her. They keep charging this vampire. I'm not saying he's using the souls of dead members of his family as a battery, but that's exactly what he's doing. To stop the vampire. Yes. She's like, you can kind of see the numbers floating around her head as she like looks back and forth between these two things. Uh, and then she casts Thunder Wave B if you want to roll a con save. Uh, yes. Are you going to aim at only the ghosts or try and hit both the vampire and the ghosts in the wings? I'm going to, well, it's a big, it's a 15 foot cube. Right. So I, I, I guess. I don't con because I don't think ghosts have, uh, um, it, it gets a plus four. So that's, that's an unnatural 20 to the con save on the vamp. Okay. So that's a save, but, uh, I get to roll my dice. I'm really happy for D and D Beyond's digital dice. It kind of makes my life easier. Uh, that is a twenty-four total, so twelve for half damage. Okay, so twelve damage to the vampire, twenty-four in total. Give me a moment. I need to follow my own rules. As you hit the thunder wave, nine of these ghosts hit, are hit by it, recoil, and then fade into that green light. Lawrence kind of whispers, while bleeding and in pain, There were 99 souls! And yeah? That, so that means you've already done with 11 out of 99. Okay. Can and I? Gonna, now you get how you're going to win this fight. Is <laughs> stopping all 99 souls? Destroying the ghosts and the wings. Okay. Okay. I, I have I have a bonus action. Mm -hmm. mm, but I don't think I can punch ghosts. You can absolutely try. <laughs> okay. Well, that didn't help my confidence. Uh, Sorry's gonna try and flurry of blows. Okay. Sorry, you go up to run at these spirits, and you realize you can't hit one of them individually, but you hit this, like, it almost feels like a, 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 fr a film, a thin film over all of their appearances. So it's like there's this thin, like, plastic wrap around where the ghosts would be, and you can hit that. Okay, so I rolled to hit. I have I rolled a ten. I have plus ten. That's, That's twenty. Then hit. It's safe to assume this thing doesn't have an AC. This is all just how much damage can you rack up? Okay, four plus. Uh, I make two unarmed strikes. So that's one, seven, mm -hmm. and two. Uh, another seven. 14, 15, 16. Okay, that's another D10. Four more vanish. Guys, they punched ghosts so hard they died. Wait, that's probably not a good thing. Is that a good thing, Laura? It's working! You could actually see, like, the big sudden loss just, like, hurts this vampire. Just, like, it clutches at its heart. Guys, punch the ghosts! They feel like plastic. Does plastic okay. exist in our universe? Next up is Finley. Uh, okay, wait. Hold on a second, though. Aren't those ghosts, like, his, his kids? Well, my child, then my child's child, then my child's child's child. 
Oh boy, I'm gonna kill this man. So um, I don't know if we should be killing the ghosts. Yeah, but if we, we kill the really... ghost, if... they bind. When they turn eighteen, they're bound. There is not one named Lord. See, it is only the Lockridge name that lives on. They are I, and I am they. <laughs> But oh, the wait. ghosts are already dead. Are wait, hold on a second. Then why do you want Lawrence? A hundred souls. Is the Lawrence will be eternal? Related to you? My child's 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 child. So you're your grandpa. Well, all and simultaneously their father, as I'm eight, all of their descendants. And I thought Fitzroy that's, was bad. That's really incestual. <laughs> oh, I am God. uncomfortable with the energy. Finley, you're up. Okay, uh, got a question first. Um, mm -hmm. So, there's... It's sort of like... I know Hex is like specifically on like one person. Mm -hmm. So I can't do that to like... A group of ghosts, right? He did just say, I am they and they am I. Alright, so... They... Interesting. If, if you target him... Yeah. Out of game, any status effects that affect the vampire affect the whole horde. Cool. I'm going to uh, pull out my um, sort of War and Peace, look at his blade and go... All of us can play this game, and then I'm going to cast bonus action hex um, on him, and then I am going to uh, I'm going to activate my war side of the sword and get four attacks. Whew. Okay, roll that damage. Just roll all of it. Uh, I mean, roll the attacks while you do so, Finn to mm -hmm. pad out the time. So keep doing that while I say this. Okay. Um, you notice that you have been forcibly whipped into ethereal vision. It feels like mental whiplash. You didn't do it. Someone made you go into this sight of ghosts, you know? Oh. And you can now not only see, but you can hear. And you hear the ghost's unknowable language. And they are all begging to feed. Oh, God. And they're all looking at Lawrence. Oh, let them feed on him. <laughs> or those hits. All right, let me see here. So we got, uh, I'm just going to list them off if that's okay. Yeah, go for um, it. Da, 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 da. 21, That's uh, 25, mm -hmm. uh, 18, mm -hmm. and 28. All hit. Cool, cool. Get to roll all that damage. Give me a moment, and I get bonus necrotic damage because of Hex. God, I, for I love how OP you all are. <laughs> it's... It's because I'm. I had to be beefy because everybody decided to be squishy. <laughs> Calling y'all out. Um, as Finley swings, that ethereal vision hit pings to all of you. You all hear the spirits asking to feed, and it's just this loud chanting, just like as all these spirits just seemingly are basically begging the vampire to get on with it and add another to the collective. Not not great. Not a fan. Spooky! <laughs> I don't... Oh God, I don't want to kill them, though. Like, that's the thing. I want to kill the vampire I, man, I obviously. But, like, they're kids. I don't want to kill them. Yeah, but we... Is there, like... I don't even know if it's my turn, but, like, is there... Any possible well, roll way. Roll. Okay. Um, Sorry, that I'll be quiet would for a be... All in total. All in total. Um, 
Yeah. That would be... 48 points of damage. Wow. Okay. Um, Finley, would you like to roll a d100? Sure, why not? Would I like to? No, but will I? Because I was told to, yes. Um. <laughs> Alright. Uh, 82. Holy shit. <laughs> hmm? Wow. Um. Oh, I see now. <laughs> uh. Finley, you are so lucky you casted that hex. <laughs> so, out of game. Damage to the vampire. The vampire is going to be like a meat bag. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a thing to keep you busy. But you hexed it. And now all damage is connected through the hex. Because if the vampire dies, there's the hex effect. So because there's a death trigger, that applies to damage towards everyone. The way the mechanic worked is if you did over 30 damage, it would be a D100 instead of a D10 in terms of how many ghosts were popped. And Finley just rolled an 82. Oh, that was oh the D. I thought. Okay, that makes sense now. There was mind. just like a magical explosion or something. Bear in mind, it started at 99. Andre removed one, leaving it at 98. 11 was the first roll. Then we were at 88. Then the, then Sari took away 4, which brought us down to 84. And now Finley just took it down 82. So there's literally two ghosts left. Wow. We're wow. And, oh, that would all, and that would have all been damaged just to the vampire if Finley did not cast that hex, because the death trigger matters. Because every time one of the spirits dies, the hex also pops off, which would have given Finley HP. So, like, Finley just got 82 bouts of, like, good vibe health. Good vibe health? <laughs> I haven't even taken any damage. I know. Wow. I just feel super good about myself. That, that, that literally only is because if hex did not have that death trigger, this would not have mattered. It's because Hex has a death trigger. That's so... Ah, uh, man. Okay. Holy fuck. <laughs> Whoops. <clears throat> the vampire is like limping now. Suddenly he went from just like powerful and intimidating to just... You just like... Admittedly, you do all see the horrendous scene of 82 ghosts clutching at their hearts and popping, basically. Yikes. I really didn't want that. <laughs> Hey, but, but okay. they're, they're ghosts. They're already it's dead. It's true. It's just sad. Shay! There's just like. They green fucking green. kill some things sometimes. Green and green I know. It's all over the place. This is Rowan speaking through me. I. <laughs> and the vampire looks like frenzied now. Because, bear in mind, it has lived almost a millennia. A hundred. Or is that a century? A century. A hundred years. Eating, like constantly on this bloodline and it suddenly was brought back to only having two <laughs> Oof. so like almost a century's worth of work was undone and it looks ready to feed on Lawrence now like all formality is done it's just it's gotta go right now you know what I mean mm -hmm. so legendary action time is going to bite Lawrence Ooh. Someone Lawrence, stop that from happening. Lawrence, meanwhile, though. Ho 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 ho. Oh, I love this. Uh, Lawrence is going to, before this happens, hold his hand out and three little beams of red energy fly out. Uh, Andre, Nia, and Finley. You three feel... Well, to Andre and Nia, a new sensation, but to Finley, a familiar one. You three have been hasted. Oh. Okay. All Lawrence has to say is, help. <laughs> Very inspiring. So you three are just hasted at max, and because of haste, in my mind, you can just, like, intercept at this point. So, 
Andre and Finn, I imagine, kind of speed up to kind of block the way of Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, whose turn is it on initiative? It is Rowan. Rowan, what are you okay. doing? So, okay. Nia, but that haste basically makes it so that way the vampire couldn't bite Lawrence, Nia, uh, Finn, and Andre in this like red. Okay. So, I know it's cliche, but I'm going to cast good old fashioned Moonbeam on him because I know that radiant damage does bad things to vampires. Okay. On the vampire himself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's a con save. That's a 15. It's, that's actually pretty good. That is good. But, but, that said, my spell save DC is a 16, so haha! Oh, okay. Well, roll your d10s. Oh, bear in mind, it had 140 HP, and so, because I didn't keep too much track on the pink damage, because the plink, there, the damage to it that, uh, Sorry, and Andre did. I put you 100 and figured 40 is about average. Then Finley did 48. <laughs> so, like, even the base body is near death already. Good job, Finley. That's my girl. I do one big hit and then I'm out. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's 19 damage? Okay. 19 damage to it. Okay. Noted. Uh, it is now Nia. Um, cool. Is Lawrence being protected currently? You, Andre, and Finn are like in direct line of sight of the vampire in front of Lawrence. He's like still holding the hit by Molten Blade. Like, I need that to keep... I kind of need to keep emphasizing. Yeah. Could I heal him on my next turn? Yes, and I'm gonna imagine you move over to do that. Okay. okay. Um... Cool. I imagine he's, like, right up on us, or, like, getting close. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I shoot him point, point blank? Okay. With my, <laughs> my bow. You absolutely can. Okay, I'm gonna roll for that. Um, yeah. Uh, what is my hit with this? Um, 22, I think? Yes. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't even, that hits. Cool. Um, uh, you know what? Sure. I'll do I'll make this a bramble shot also and just do more damage when I probably yeah. don't need to. Um you, how might, many it might actually how many do you well, you, well, you, you add that up. I'm gonna say yeah. I'm gonna give the NPCs their turns. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Anna is gonna like cast a fire spell on hands, but then you see it like light her own fist on fire. Ooh. And she just kind of cracks her knuckles and goes, I've been training this year. And she runs up to the bleacher thing that's there. And that last, like, one sitting spirit. And she just punches the fuck out of it. Good. That's, that's cool. The best way to put this is, she cast Fireball, and using a meta magic thing as a sorcerer, she was able to make it a melee attack. That's awesome. So oh, cool. So she just meleeed a ghost with a fist fireball. That's amazing. Really cool. Awesome. Incinerating them. And Calum is going to use his turn to, uh... What is Calum going to do? Um... He screams where he does not know. <laughs> he's going to use the <laughs> action to help on, on Nia, because, yeah. Even though you don't need it, that just gives him sure. to do. Um, that was a 22 base damage. Um, okay, that... Oof. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I need him to make a strength saving throw. Okay. Shit. <laughs> That's actually quite good, actually. Oh, no. 17? Oh, my DC is 17. Meets it beats. Yeah. Good. So... 
a bunch of like thorny brambles like explode from the from like where the arrow was, but he doesn't get blown down by them. Yeah. It just looks cool. Yeah. Andre, you're back to the top of the order. Oh boy. Okay. Uh-huh. I need to put it to perspective. On a scale of 140 to 0, uh, he's looking at 16 and there's no souls left. Once you bring him down to 0, it's over. <clears throat> For <clears throat> good. Okay. All right. Okay. With that in mind. Um because Finley managed to work through a technicality I didn't consider and break this fight, and I'm so happy. Like, yeah, I'm not mad. I'm elated. That was amazing. <laughs> I feel a little scared, but no, thank you. As your DM slash as your friend, that was so badass. I don't even have words. <laughs> Finley, I think that's a theme for Finley. Is just like doing things that break the game, but in the most badass way possible. Like that's how we. That's how we beat terror. Like I, I'm not. I am not. I know I'm not even mad as a meme, but I'm dead honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it was so cool. The imagery. The imagery. Very <laughs> good. Yes. The vibes. Anyway, what's your turn, Andre? <laughs> Oh, let me check something real quick. I I was still worried that this fight was going to be a long one because of the ghost mechanic. That was awesome. Uh, you didn't account for Finley. I did not account for Finley. And also, kill count. Finley's kill count has risen by eighty-two in one swing. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Sometimes I forget right. how powerful these characters are because, like, we play C2 and they're all babies. Yeah. And I remember, like, wow, our, our C1 characters are really, really powerful. Yep. Mm, let me see. Mm -hmm. Catch me out here forgetting what I'm supposed to do. Mood. <laughs> nope, that's necrotic damage. That 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 nope. <laughs> Probably not a good idea. If Hex didn't have the death, oh man, I'm still like I'm still <laughs> I'm still just like thinking through it in my head. It's so clever. If it was if it was on purpose, then it was act of brilliance. Anyway. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. I'm done. I am going to cast Disney Whispers at second level. Oh. Um, <laughs> so that's a wisdom save. You found the one skill it's not great at. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't even roll good. Uh, 11? <laughs> nope. All right, how much damage? All right, that is. Well, uh, first of all, on a failed save, a uh, target must immediately use its reaction to move as far away from me as possible. <laughs> so that helps Lawrence. True. And I get to throw 46 damage. Hold on. Oh. Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> Five, ten, ten. Wait, hold on. I can count. I can count. Okay. That is 19. <laughs> How do you want to do this? <laughs> um, ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. This is this note whispers. So uh, I whisper a discordant melody that only one creature of my choice within range can hear. Okay, so I am. Is she like singing? 
Yeah, kind of. But like that's only so cool. the vampire thing can hear it though. Oh, so, that's so cool, to everyone though. else, it just kind of appears like I imagine because she's kind of like all up in this vampire space. She kind of for flavor just leans in real close and is literally just whispering this. And then he just, you know, immediately falls back and just doesn't get up. Andre whispers, and I need to describe what transpires. They back away by compulsion and then clutch their heart as this last soul leaves. And Andre, the soul is singing in tune with you. Whoa. Um, it, where yours was menacing and intimidating, it's, it's like if yours was in a minor, this is in a major key, it is singing a song of freedom at last. Oh, shit. And as it sings and flies up to the heavens, the vampire lord looks at Lawrence and just like, you see like age catch up to it withering and turning into dust in front of all of you and it barely has the time to blurt out you're nothing without me you could have joined us and become something more and Lawrence just kind of looks at this vampire and just goes no I think I'm gonna do my own thing thanks and the vampire cannot even respond as its face just as the sun rises. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Instantly, ah. Imagery. Instantly, as the sun rises, though, those stone statues sink into the, the grotto. They only seem to appear at night. And Nia and Andre, at the corner of your eye, you see two humanoids with, like, masks that match the serpentine look. Look towards one another. Seemingly, like upset and before like just back away and hide and f and as Lawrence turns to you all and just kind of smiles their approval you all kind of walk back towards the castle uh, to nurse your wounds and actually let the party actually happen the next night so you will get your Halloween party <clears throat> yay good <laughs> But Andre, as you leave, you feel that there's something else still singing. Awesome. 82 ghosts in one big hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So much, Ava, for hanging out Thanks. with us tonight. Yeah, thank you all yeah. for having me. It was a blast to finally get to play with you guys. Yes. Deep in the woods, there was a fire that burned with an evil desire. Desire to feed on the pain. A flame that would never retire A power that would drive you insane And it said Why don't you cast yourself on me? I promise you won't feel a thing There's golden treasures underneath You'll see Now please Give yourself to me Deep in the woods The fire grew higher The flesh would dissolve and expire But 
the bones and the ashes remain They whistled and snapped like a choir A chorus that cried out in vain And it said Why don't you cast yourself on me? I promise you won't feel a thing There's golden treasures underneath You'll see Now please give yourself to me Still a fire that will never grow weary or tired And draws closer and closer each day And in bed we start to perspire Pray you don't hear that refrain Give yourself to me